Welcome back to Washington, D.C. The media and everyone else has got their expectations for the forthcoming U.S. midterm elections wrong in their predictions of a sweeping Republican victory, according to Richard Trumka, head of the AFL-CIO, America's largest trade union. Richard Trumka, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, you've recently spoken about the AFL-CIO's uh, desire and ability to build a, a firewall uh, for the Democratic Party in the midterm elections, which makes you one of the, the few people in this town in Washington who believes that you can prevent a Republican victory. Uh, has everybody got this wrong? Well, I think there's a growing number of people that are tending towards our point of view because the numbers are changing. Uh, if you look at the numbers in Pennsylvania and Ohio and other states, uh, they've been changing towards uh, uh, electing uh, Democrats who stand for uh, continuing uh, an economy that really works for everybody rather than the Republican message of going back to what we had under George Bush where Wall Street ran wild. Do you think that message is getting through though? I mean, oh, I do indeed right now. It shows up in the polls, it shows up in a number of places and the more they talk about the, the, the pledge on America, uh, the, the more people understand it. This is just exactly what they had before and it didn't work and it won't work now and it'll push the economy back into uh, a deep recession, if not a depression, if they take over. Do you think there's a problem here in terms of the Democratic Party's strategy, or, or its messaging strategy, at least over the last few months, um, of, of mixed messages? There's been a lot of emphasis on cutting the deficit as well as creating jobs. And the two, in, in a popular mind, often seem to uh, subtract from each other. The Republicans have had a very clear, consistent, however wrong you think it is, a very clear, consistent line of attack. Yeah, I, I think the messaging was uh, stepping on itself early on, uh, particularly coming out of the White House, where they were talking about job creation in the first half, the sentence, and deficit reduction in the second half. Look, we, we don't have a short-term deficit problem in this country. We have a short-term job crisis. We do have a long-term deficit crisis, but the more jobs that you create, the lower that deficit gets. That deficit right now is predicated on two things. The two wars that George Bush started, and his tax cuts. Take those two away, those strings, three things away, the deficit goes away. Create jobs, they go away. And I think they did step on their message early on, particularly the White House. At what stage do you think the White House realized they were stepping on their message and corrected? How long have they been getting, in your view, their message right? Probably a couple of months. Tim Guyton, the Treasury Secretary, sitting just behind you in, in the Treasury over there, has been can't, can't won't, um, shouldn't in terms of branding China a currency manipulator. You've not been getting uh, m much leadership there from your perspective from this administration, have you? I, I disagree with that. Uh, while he hasn't been perhaps as aggressive as I would like, he's been far more aggressive. This administration has been far more aggressive than any other we've had in the past. Uh, behind the scenes, they're working to get them done. I mean, we now have a bill passed uh, through the House that'll push currency. Uh, so uh, they understand the problem there, they're working for it. And look what they did. Last year they put a tariff uh, uh, on tires because the Chinese were cheating and we caught them. In one year, domestic production's gone up 15%. Uh, we put a tariff on pipes, steel pipes, because they were cheating and we caught them and proved it. And, and people are getting called back to work in pipe factories. Symbolically important, oh, but it's a fraction of the, of the trade flow. No, but it's a start to enforce the laws. Mm -hmm. Because the last administration refuse to enforce even the bad, weak, paltry laws that are on the book. It's getting back to your firewall that you've got 11, 12 million members. Um, 12 million. Uh, 12 million, I'm sorry. Over the last couple of years, you haven't had everything you'd wanted out of this administration, most particularly the um, Employee Free Choice Act or the card check law, depending on what you call it. How can you gin up enthusiasm amongst your members when... But you don't have to say the last couple of years. Working people in this country for the last 200 years haven't gotten everything they've wanted or, for, quite frankly, deserve. Expectations were higher for the last couple of years than, than in recent... You have to say, though, uh, has, has this administration been fair to workers? Absolutely been fair to workers. Uh, look at what they've done. Uh, they, they stopped the ban on, on PLAs so that we could get fair wages. Uh, they stopped the use of taxpayers' dollars to stop union busting. Uh, the Secretary of Labor stopped the misclassification of workers so they got fair pay. We've pursued fair labor cases. They've pursued 
uh, health care provisions. They've pursued uh, re-regulating uh, Wall Street. All of those things have an effect on us because they have an effect on the economy. And, and your members know this. I mean, you're not going to have any problem in, in getting them out to vote. No. Well, I, I think early on, I think probably back in May, June, and maybe early July, there was uh, the, the enthusiasm. Uh, the people call it the enthusiasm gap. I, I think there was some, some merit to that. I think there was. But since that period of time, our members, we give them the facts. They're getting excited. If you look at the early voting, our members are voting at higher numbers than anybody else, including tea baggers or anybody else. So look, this is a defining moment for the country. We're either going to continue on a direction where we create an economy that works for everybody, or we're going to go back to the economy that we had that worked for the very top one, two or percent, but the rest of us were left out of it. That's exactly what John Boehner's saying. He's saying, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going back to where it was. I'm going to deregulate everything. I'm going to let Wall Street run wild. There'll be no jobs bills. There'll be no extensions of unemployment benefits. Uh, I will roll back health care provisions that have been started. Uh, what, what you mentioned about Republican leader John Boehner um, just, just uh, reminds me of that mixed message on the Democratic side, because clearly enough members, uh, Democratic lawmakers, are now in favor of extending George W. Bush's tax cuts for all income groups, including those earning above a quarter of a million. And this has happened in the last... What did you say? And there are enough Democratic lawmakers who now believe in the extension of that, of where those you, tax cuts. Where did you arrive at that conclusion? Um, by the results, Nancy Pelosi didn't take it to a vote. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I, I mean, I can cite you members, people like Jerry Connolly just across the river, that's his position now. I reject the notion that a majority of people, a majority of Democrats, would let that be extended for everyone. I don't believe that. But there are clearly a number who publicly stated that they would, they would prefer an extension, enough to make getting a majority problematic. And the point is? And the point is that this isn't a unified party. Um, <laughs> well, look, are. don't come to me to, to say that the Democrats are a unified party, because this isn't about a party. It isn't about Democrats or Republicans. It's about who's running for each individual race, whether... Oh, no, hold on a minute. You, you, you are backing the Democratic Party. Are you backing one Republican in one race? We do back Demo Republicans in races. We back Can you cite a Republican you're backing? Right now? Yes. Can, if you can give me one that is good for workers, I'll endorse them. This Republican Party has moved so far to the right, it's virtually impossible to find moderate Republicans that you can support. Whenever their party says we ought to uh, eliminate the minimum wage, when we ought to eliminate Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, I mean, that's a radical party. How much um, are you spending on this election? What, what's your outlay? What difference does it make? Um, it's just interesting to hear what... It's a distraction. We'll have enough money to do exactly what we intend to do, and that's educate our members and get them out to vote. That's our job. Give them the facts and then mobilize them to get out to vote. We'll have enough money to do that. Will we be able to do uh, the, all the messages that, that the Republicans and all the independent expenditures are having? No. We've never been able to compete on that level. They have always had 17, 18, 19, 20 times more resources than we do. But we have plenty of resources when it comes to educating and mobilizing our members. Uh, well, thank you very much for sparing the time. You bet.